What's up, what's up, Crypto Nation? Welcome to Bite Size Bitcoin and B90X, day 24. Today, we're gonna be jumping into support and resistance lines. Now, this might seem super basic, but there's actually some really fundamental things that we need to understand around support and resistance lines. I hope that you've watched our previous video segments on the foundations of technical analysis and candles and all the different archetypes of candles. So if you haven't watched those yet, make sure that you check those out. So let's jump in to support and resistance lines. Here we go. B90 S. Bring it. Yes. Welcome again to B90X Bitcoin 90 day challenge day 24 support and resistance lines. Let's jump right in. When it comes to support and resistance lines, what they really reveal are the forces of supply and demand. Now, you might have never thought of it that way. You've probably drawn support and resistance lines before, but it's really foundational for us to understand that these support lines really reveal to us the forces of supply and demand. Now, when I say supply, what I really mean is bears and selling. So in simple economics, when there's high supply, People want to sell. People want to sell. When it comes to demand, what I mean by demand is bulls and buying. When there's high demand in basic economics, people want to buy, which means the price will go up. So as demand increases, prices will advance. As supply increases, prices will decline. If the supply and demand is equal in the market, then the price will move sideways. And another word for this is consolidation. Support and resistance lines can only really be established from the previous reaction high and lows. I like to use two or more data points to create a support or to create a resistance line. So let's get into these now. Let's talk about support lines. Support lines mean that there's a price level at which demand is thought to be strong enough to prevent the price from declining further, right? If the price is moving downwards, the demand opportunity for buyers to get in is, will be so strong that it hopefully will not go below that support line. Now, by the time the price reaches the support level, the assumption or rather the logic behind this is that the demand will overcome supply and prevent the price from falling below the support line. So let's do a couple examples of those right now. Let's say that we are right here, right now. We're right here, right now in this green, this green candle right here. Now, what we don't know, if we're right here right now, what we don't know is the future. So I'm going to blank this out for context. Okay, so I'm going to blank this section out here for context. Here we go. Boom. There we go. Okay, so we're sitting pretty right here at this green candle, this upside down or inverted hammer of sorts. Okay, so if we look back in history, we can create a pretty substantial support line. Let's do that now. We can draw it right from here over here and we can extend it out to about over here. Now, the reason is, is because we have two and maybe even a third data point to be able to substantiate the support line. The data points are right where we are right now, as well as this particular reaction low. And we could say that we could include this reaction low as well. We might even want to bring this up just a little bit right in the middle and say this might be a pretty plausible support line. Okay. And so what we would hope to see, what we would hope to see is that if we are here to, right now, we are just touching the support line. So what we're hoping, what we're hoping is that the price will go back up. Let's talk about resistance lines. A resistance line is a price level at which the supply is thought to be strong enough to prevent the price from rising further. Okay. And by the time the price reaches the resistance level, the assumption or the logic behind this is that supply will overcome demand and prevent the price 
from rising above the resistance level. And so if we are still right here, we don't know the future of what's going to happen. We have some pretty significant data points in which we can create some resistance lines. The first one you probably can create immediately. It would be up here. And let's make that red to differentiate. So this would be certainly an all time high. So this would be a significant resistance level, even though we only really have one data point to go on, which is just this. Now you probably see another resistance level potentially. Remember we are right here right now. So resistance level could be created or substantiated right around here, something like that. And we can even, we can even bring it out farther. Okay, so if we are here right now on this small green candle, this small inverted hammer, we are hoping, we're hoping that the price will go up and hopefully potentially break through this resistance line and move upwards towards, again, the all time high. Okay, now this is where you're going to have to start adding in all the other things that you learned about that we've covered previously in candles from inverted hammers to hanging men to a shooting star. All these different candle archetypes are very powerful for telling you whether the momentum is going to continue to increase or there's might be a reversal in the trend. Okay. So let's try this exercise one more time. Let's create some resistance and some support lines. So let's just say that we're sitting pretty right here. Let's say we're sitting pretty right here with what we can see is essentially a spinning top. Okay. So we're right here with this green spinning top of sorts. If we're here right now, we have enough data points to create a support and a resistance line. Let's create the resistance lines first. The resistance lines are pretty clear. We can create one right here right and the reason would be is we have at least two solid data points to show that this might be an area in which supply hopefully will not overtake demand and demand will drive it up past this resistance line now we can also create some support lines and i think we have enough basis for doing so we can create it down here and let's make this green just for differentiation so if we are sitting right here and we don't have this section blocked off, I'll block it off right now. Okay. So if we don't know, if we're sitting right here, we don't know what the future is, but we do have some pretty significant points to work on. We'd say that there's a resistance line up here and there's a support line down here based on, again, these particular data points. And if you'd like, you might be able to even drag it up just a little bit to even it out maybe right about here. Obviously a lower support line would be down here. Okay. And so if we are sitting right here, right now, the hope, the hope is that we will continue to see some oscillation and hopefully not break past this support line here. And hopefully in the future, it'll break past this resistance line and move up towards these higher resistance lines. Okay. So, What's the point of creating these support and resistance lines? Let me give you some tips and let's go up here. Number one, it is sometimes very difficult to find these lines. It's not an exact science. It's not an exact science at all. The real value of support and resistance lines is over time. But the more time and more experience you have in drawing resistance lines and support lines for a specific coin, the more experience you will garner. What this experience will garner you is the ability to understand and project potential movements in the market for that particular coin. But the two biggest tips, the two biggest tips from creating support lines and resistance lines is the awareness that they actually exist is awareness that they actually exist and people actually other traders and the market in general generally play by these same rules. And so it's powerful because what it helps you understand is that it actually affects the price changes and the price swings, as well as the market psychology of a particular coin. The second major thing that 
resistance lines and support lines help you understand is it cr it creates a vigilance in you. It creates some alerts. So for example, if we were right here, if let's say we were right here, let's say we were right here in this green, in this green candle right here, we could say, you know what? It's moving towards this resistance line. I'm hoping that it will break through. I'm hoping that it will break through, but I won't feel too bad because a support line has been established here. So I can hodl or hold my coin and hopefully it'll go up. But if it drops down a little bit, which it did here, I don't feel so bad because it's still within the support line range. So to summarize it up, Support and resistance lines are very powerful for understanding where a coin will oscillate. And what it creates essentially for you as a trader or investor is an awareness that number one, they exist, but number two, they are opportunities to stay extra vigilant as the coin price gets closer to those support lines or closer to those resistance lines. And what it will avail you is the opportunity to execute or act based upon your own previous experiences with that particular coin. We're going to jump more into support lines and resistance lines in upcoming episodes, but I think it's really important for us to understand the fundamental economics behind support and resistance lines. Understanding how these things work, how they're created is absolutely fundamental for you to become a better investor and better trader. I hope this was a helpful B90X for you guys today. If you like what you see, please consider supporting us on patreon.com slash pub or just subscribing as a YouTube subscriber. Make sure to hang out with us in the Bitcoin pub because that is where we are learning and growing together and becoming better cryptocurrency investors and cryptocurrency and traders so that we can live the best cryptocurrency lifestyle that we possibly can. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.